Hi there, my name is Michael Naranjo and welcome to Real Music Works. Today I'm going to talk about an album called Beauty From Ashes. This record was, ah man, we just, had, that was the first one that I did that we, that we financed and we printed a thousand copies, sold it all in the back of the, the, you know, the trunk or the boot of my car. So this album is just basically an amalgamation of songs and demos that are recorded on a Roland BR A188, oh, it's one of these multi-digital track recorders with a little green screen with the little sound waves going up and down. Uh, I was able to record demos with that. And this was basically a collection of songs that I did whilst I was in hotel rooms. Now that's a whole different experience, uh, doing cover music uh, five to six nights a week, four sets a night. Uh, I had to quickly get into a certain routine to kind of keep up with that sort of lifestyle. I was doing a lot of swimming, uh, trying to get the lungs, you know, somebody gave me some advice the night before, I said, hey man, it's gonna get, it's gonna get wild. So I, I took some advice because the, the live seven day story just, you know, paid now and then. You go to a festival and then you don't play for two, three months. This was six nights a week and it wasn't just 45 minutes or half an hour set at a festival. This was a complete, complete different scenario. This was 45 minutes, 15 minute break and another 45 minutes and this is four sets a night six nights a week so you kind of you kind of you, you you know you cut your teeth on that you really you really you sharpen that sword so so nicely that you know you become you become a thing called gig fit so in this point in time you know we used to uh, sleep during the day uh get up go to you know do your, your lunch we always missed breakfast that's the thing we always miss breakfast because the hours were just ludicrous and when you play in a five-star hotel uh, there's a certain kind of rules that also the band needs to, uh, uh, you know, apply itself to. And uh, at three o'clock, the, the venues would close and everybody would leave. And that's what I would stay behind with Neil Payton's keyboard that was on stage. And that was the keyboard that I used to do the drum tracking on. And I had my little recorder. So what happened is after hours when everybody left, I would switch on the lights just on the stage, keep it dim. I'd carry on. So bearing in mind, I would drive at the venue at about half past eight, because nine o'clock, half past nine, we hit the stage, finish it about 12, 12, 1 30 sometimes for the encore, and this is every night. And then from there, there's this two hour gap that, you know, we sit around, maybe have a, like a late dinner or whatever. And then when that's done, you know, everybody sort of like, it's time to go home, please. You know, security telling everybody to leave. Uh, the band would leave. Everybody goes except me. I'll stay behind. Uh, like I said, have to set up on stage and start doing these demos. And these demos were basically my probably, I mean, they were all done with a click track this time around. <laughs> but I had a keyboard and I didn't have, in those days, we did, I didn't have uh, the door or the DAW yet. You know, there was no new end or anything like that to my my. You know, I, I had to figure it out. I, I wanted, I knew how to put a song together by this point in time, at least from a demo format. So I would, you know, record everything on this little recorder. Uh, first, the music. I record a whole full click track. I'll just ding, 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 like a whole track, and then I'll go back, and then I would arrange the drums because I'd really put a guide a guitar, and then I would arrange drums around that with the click. And then I put the left and right guitar at the bass. Boom! I had the I had the basic down, mix it down, and then run it back in through the stereo cables, back into the thing, record it to the stereo track. So that mix I recorded the stereo track because I used to you know burn it down, the mix down into a little disc, and you open it up, and this disc comes out with the, with the mix, and I would put it in the CD player. The DJ had a really nice CD player, so that was a really nice feed coming back in, and I would record that feed back in and then I would carry on with doing extra fiddly bits and vocals and mix that down and that was so that was a kind of multi-tracking analog style digitally <laughs> and this would happen and I'd finish at about 6 30 7 o'clock breakfast is out I would leave from the club go all the way down to the breakfast uh have some breakfast and then and then go to bed and that was the cycle that was three months and then 
be four months, and then and there's I think there's like eighteen songs on this thing, or nineteen songs on this. I I don't know how we did it. It was Derek Lennox at a place called. Yeah, he uh, he was an engineer at the studio. So every time we had to cut little you know fade outs, we had to cut it so so tight because I only had X amount of money to put down so that they could print a booklet, which is really nice and with the words and. And it was, I sort of, you know, I was really trying to attempt to do the, the third Michael Naranjo um, album that has, you know, I've been very overdramatic with the bros and everything. Um, but it, it was, uh, over here it says, from the singer-songwriter going over slowly, beauty from ashes. You know, obviously I was going through some personal stuff as a young man and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but you know, all these songs had some sort of real life to it because I was meeting people and I was just really writing about what I was observing and, uh, family life, um, you know, failed relationships, mistakes were well, very dramatic. Some very like big, big epic tunes that I would do with a, with a really entry level kind of rolling keyboard, ah, orchestra arranged. No, no, I, I had to like figure it out all by like, you know, I'm the guy that taps with one finger on the keyboard. So it was, it was something really, uh, something to behold. Uh, I learned a lot about, you know, modes and different things about music, uh, discipline. The mixing and mastering i got to tell you from back then when i hear those demos they they're pretty well balanced at least for for a um for a listener's point of view to be played in the car and people would actually enjoy it so cut a long story short come back to south africa i ended up playing at a place called doodles which became like a local hangout we hit sundays and we hit like uh, i think it was uh uh, you know, special on Tuesday. So we had a nice two, two week a gig a week with myself and some of the drips and drabs left over members from the band that was overseas at Dubai or Muscat. So we would jam as a three piece and we do the cover thing that we were very well familiar with. Obviously we have to make and earn an income. And I had a thousand of these in the truck or in the car and I would bring like 25 and I would sell it out. You know, I would, I would, Really, you know, I had some really good friends out there and they would like, you know, hey, how you doing? This is the guy's playing this album, this is original songs, man. And people would freak out, you know. They they really, they knew the, go the going nowhere slowly is kind of what sold this. And the, the mistake I made was never putting going nowhere slowly on this disc, which I really should have done. It would have justified the sale because people used to watch me sing it when I came back and they were blown away. This is the dude, the whole place would sing the song because... I came back and it was like a really successful show and all of a sudden everybody's been, I would go down venues, play at the one place with, with Guido and, 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 the, and the, the, the band and we'd go around for, you know, smoke a cigarette, go around the block, stand the head during our breaks or have a beer or whatever. And then we'd hear across the road, like Guido would say, hey man, that guy's playing your song. Can you hear? I'm like, go and no, it's slowly and that's so like, Oh my man, that's pretty cool. I was like, wow. And we had yeah, doing the cover gig. <laughs> so we went in there and obviously it was sort of a battle of the band. So we cranked up and we did our version, which was the original version. So those people came over and they were pretty cool. So we ended up having a couple of drinks that night with the people who were coming and going. Though. So it was pretty intense. So we uh, ended up shopping, you know, you, just, you give your CD, the other band's got a CD. You kind of want to hold on to your cash for the week, for, you know, for the rent and all that kind of stuff. So <laughs> we used to like uh, hand CDs around, like a business card at the end of the day. And then uh, to cut a long story short, uh, they were like, oh man, is that song on the disc? I'm like, mm. that's when I realized, that's when I realized that I should have done that a long time ago. Uh, just because I felt that um, I really didn't know enough of you know, how publishing really worked and how copyright really worked. That meant that uh, I was the creator. I, I owned the complete 100% copyright of it. It was my voice and my performances on the track and it's my written song. So whether whoever had percentage into the song actually had no say. And I didn't know that at that point in time. So that's a lesson learned. I hope you, I hope you uh, there's a lot of really good publishing and copyright advice online today. In these days, there was nothing. You needed a music lawyer that I could never afford. So, to cut a long story short, uh, Beauty From Ashes is a very well, still very well received. I still get uh, messages in my inboxes of people talking about this thing that happened 20 years ago. It's crazy. Beauty From Ashes, a really cool 
um, piece of memory of, a, a, you know, just a, a, ma a magnitude of tunes that was done in all these hotel rooms in different places around the world on a disc. So it has some sort of personal merit, I suppose. Oh well, uh, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, Michael Naranjo, Beauty from Ashes, and the story behind of all of that. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and follow us on social network, in the bell, do all those little things that you do. And God bless, and uh, thank you for this opportunity.